welcome to Let's Paint, acrylic painting classes for beginners of all ages. I'm Victoria Goebel and in each video I will be teaching you techniques step by step to a completed acrylic painting. In each class we will have two students learning alongside you. Today we have David and Cynthia. David is 11 years old and homeschooled by Cynthia. Today they'll be covering art lesson. So before we get started, make sure you have all of your materials. You can find that on my supplies video on YouTube. So we will be painting a mason jar with fireflies. When I was living in Iowa, one of the best things about summer was uh, catching fireflies and watching them light up. It was just like twinkle lights. And so I thought that would be really fun to teach David today. So today we'll need a template and you can get this on my website at letspaintwithvictoriagobel.com. So both of you hold up your templates and as you can see mine is a different size than theirs because I'm working with a 16 by 20 canvas and they're working with an 11 by 14 canvas. So uh, if you want to paint your painting bigger download the bigger size. If you want to do a smaller one download the smaller size. So before we get started we need to find out where the horizon line is gonna go. And I have watercolor pencils for you. And what we wanna do with a good composition is make sure that it's not in the middle. You don't want it be, to be in the middle. It's usually a third, a third, and a third. So let's go ahead and sort of eyeball two thirds. So it would be about two here. And I'm just gonna draw an imaginary line like this. So you guys go ahead and draw an imaginary line, okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can always change it as we go along. This is where we're going to do more of a nighttime sky. And this is all going to be grass. This whole scene is nighttime. By the way, in case you haven't noticed, all of our canvases have already been primed with one coat of Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is not black, although it looks like it's black when it dries. It's actually a very dark navy blue. So I already primed each of these before they got here, and now we're going to go ahead and start applying the sky up here, which is a nighttime sky. We don't want to do the bottom part first because then your hand will be rubbing in wet paint. So what we do is we start at the top and work our way down. So let's start with our nighttime sky. All right, take out your palette plates and put some cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of white. All right, so I've already given you your paint. Take your very large brush, the whitest one that you have in front of you, and let's dip it in some water and then dry it off. This way we're not working with a completely dry brush, okay? So, what you want to do is take this cobalt blue color and go ahead and start applying it above your line. And graduate to the ultramarine blue. Just dip it right in the ultramarine blue and see how it's darker? Then dip it into the darker blue that you have on your palette, which is phthalo blue, and go ahead and start applying it right into the cobalt blue, and just sort of blend the two together. Okay, now that I've blended these two colors together, I'm going to just dip, I'm not going to clean my brush out, just dip it right into this Payne's Gray. Remember I said it looks like black, but it's really not black, it's like a dark navy blue. And that will be my third color that I apply, right, and blend it right in with the phthalo blue. See how our nighttime sky is just getting darker and darker as it gets higher. Wet on wet, just blend the two colors together. 
make sure that the Payne's gray goes all the way to the top. There we go. And that's where we'll stop with our sky. Okay, so now let's get started on the grassy area. You'll need some hooker's green and some more Payne's gray. So take a scoop of the hooker's green and take some of that Payne's gray and let's mix those two together. So what we're gonna get is more of a darker green. And start blocking in this area in here. Lots of darkness to begin with because we're going to add our grass as soon as we get this blocked in. And you can go ahead and take your brush and put it up and down like this just to give it more of a grassy, grassy effect. There we go. So more Payne's Gray and more of the hooker's green, just keep blocking it in. It should be a very, very dark hunter green. If you find that your paint is a little thick, just dip your brush in a little bit of water and put it back in your paint and it should glide on a lot smoother. This is gonna dry a lot darker than what you're putting it on. covered up. Okay, so now it's time to work on a little bit of detail in the grass. So let's take this paintbrush and let's go ahead and just set it down. Don't put it in the water. I want it to stay green and wet. So take the size brush right here that looks like it's a chisel. Like this. Okay, you're going to take a little bit of orange and mix it in the hooker's green. I know that sounds weird putting orange and green together, but it, the orange is so transparent, it sort of fades away. Okay, and now starting from the top right here, don't let your hand touch the canvas because it's going to get all green. So you just want to hold your paintbrush like this and start doing little grassy strokes that go up and down. Now make sure that your paintbrush you're using the thin side of your paintbrush, not the wide part, but the narrow part. Okay, so we're gonna go just little brush strokes that go up like this. See how it looks like grass? And see how I might, my hand is not even touching the canvas, I'm holding it far away. our way all the way across with these small little strokes and because this is far away these need to be smaller and as we get closer up the grass strokes get longer so now I'm going to go ahead and start this area over here the second row and my grass is going to get a little bit longer not much but just enough all different directions. You don't want to just go up and down and up and down. Go side to side because grass doesn't go in just one direction. It grows in all different crazy directions.
And of course, when I come down a little bit lower, my grass is going to be even longer. This is kind of time consuming, but it is very relaxing. Sometimes I see a hint of orange coming through, but I kind of like that, so leave it. Don't worry if you see a little bit of orange in your strokes. And this always works best when you are applying wet paint on wet paint. So you want to try to do this as quickly as possible while your paint is still wet. It doesn't have to be, but it does work out nicer when it is. Now the goal of the grass is by the time we get down to this area in here, we want grass strokes about this long, okay? So I'll put a few here just to sort of help me gauge how long my strokes need to be. As you get down to the bottom, add a little bit more orange than you did in the beginning so that these blades of grass are brighter. See how I just laid a few down here? They should be brighter than the ones that are further away. Don't forget to dip in the water if it's drying up. Remember when I told you not to take your big brush and rinse it out and leave the green on it? I'm gonna go ahead and dip that in a little bit of orange. It's already got green on it. And I wanna do a few long ones. And again, I'm using the very thin part of the paintbrush. Not, I'm not going wide, I'm going narrow. And that's how I'm able to get these really thin, long, grassy strokes. But I know that my, um, that my mason jar is gonna be over here to the right, so I'm putting a few really long reeds of grass. So that's it for our grass. I want it to dry really well before I get to the next part. So this is a good time to go take a break and get a snack or do whatever you need to do and we'll come back and start drawing our mason jar. 
So welcome back from your break. Uh, we had some yummy tamales and strawberries and everything. It was really fun. So now we're going to get started with the details of our painting. So take your mason jar template. By the way, if you want to draw this on yourself and you feel creative enough, feel free to do it. But since these are beginner painting classes, I try to make it easy for you. So what we want to do is kind of position our template on the canvas but we, want, we don't want it to be straight up and down. We kind of want our mason jar a little bit tilted. So take your watercolor pencil or a, I have a chalk pencil here, and go ahead and lightly trace around. It should show up pretty easy because we have a very dark background. And so just go all the way around. And I would say don't even worry about drawing the entire bottom because we're going to put um, grass coming over it anyway. So I can definitely see my uh, outline of my mason jar. And so we won't need this anymore. Save it in case you want to do this painting again sometime. So before we get busy painting the jar, I'm going to paint fireflies. This is the fun part. And this is a little technique that I made up. So. We'll start off with our cad yellow light mixed in with some white. And I'm just going to just dip my tiny little brush in that and mix it into the white. I don't want it to be a bright yellow color, more of just a very, very, very soft light yellow color. I'm going to dip it in a little bit of water just to, so it's not so thick. A little bit more. I kind of want it a little bit thinner than what we've been working with. Okay, so before we get started doing our fireflies, first I want to decide how many I want to do. We're going to start with the jar and I think I want to put maybe, mm, let's do about five inside the jar. So the way I start it is I put a just a tiny little circle of paint and then I take the, my fingertip and I just go around and around and around in a circle and fade it out. So what I'm trying to do is get it to be lighter and lighter and lighter. So we go ahead and do another one and go around and around and around. Try not to dip it into the middle of it. You're just kind of coming on the outside of the circle and going around and this kind of gives it a glow effect. don't really want to have them all be the same size either. I'm trying to make them look like they're different. Maybe I want to do more than five. So I'm going to go ahead and do about seven of them in there. One that's definitely close to the top, like it's getting ready to fly out. And it just takes a little tiny dot. Oops, since I got some there, I'll just go ahead and make that into one. And take just regular the the light yellow color and put a dab in the center of each one. And this is that soft little glow that comes off of the end of their tail. Okay, so I think I'm gonna stop there with the ones that are in the jar. So now I'm gonna concentrate on the ones that are flying all over. Now, do as many as you like, but they need to be in different sizes. The ones that will be really small are the ones that are far, far away, and the ones that are big are the ones that are close up. So you don't wanna do all of them in the same size. So I'll start off right here. Definitely maybe over here do a larger one.
And the small one would be just a little tiny, a little tiny dot. See how it's smaller than the rest of them? And this is really the focal point of the painting are the fireflies. So we really want to make sure that we put a whole lot of them all over. Um, I remember in the summertime in Iowa, they would just be covered all over the grass and it would look like little twinkle lights, like fairy lights. So put quite a few of them on. That will look um, more realistic. Don't forget to put a solid piece of paint in the middle of each one. I want to make sure that I look like I have some that are actually coming out of the jar. So I'm going to put one even right on the line of where my jar is. These guys are excited that they got free. So they're all flying around. If you're not happy with one of your fireflies, just take a, a little wet paper towel and wipe it down. My, that one that I just did was a little big, so I'm going to go ahead and redo it. Here we go. The ones that are really, really, really far away, all that is, is taking your teeny tiny brush and you're just going to put a tiny little dot. Those are the ones that are really super far away. And just put an even amount all over the sky and the grass. Now these little tiny ones will only be way off in the distance. They won't be up here close. The, the ones that are here in the forefront will be larger. And don't forget to put the little white dot inside the middle of these that need it. place where I want to stop. 
Okay, on just a few of them that are close up, take that little tiny brush, and what you wanna do is kind of give it a wing effect. So I just put like a little, just a little uh, line here and a line here, and that gives me the, the illusion that it's bug wings, but not on all of them, just a few of them. And only on the ones that are more close up. Ones that are far away, just leave them, just how they are. And I think that's actually all I'm gonna do. I'll give it to this guy right here, and then call it done, just so we have a few that are, we can actually see their wings in motion. So that's a good place to stop. These need to be really dry, so this is a good time just to take a little bit, a little break. So if you're in a hurry, you can take a blow dryer and blow dry it. If not, just go take a break and come back in about five minutes and we'll start on the mason jar. Okay, now that our bugs are dry, let's get started with our mason jar. Take a small piece of paper towel and dip it into some water and wring it out really good. This is what we're going to use to fade the color of the mason jar in the center. So take that and just fold it into a cute little square because that's about the size you're gonna need. Okay, so let's take a, this size brush here, about this size, dip it in the water because it's all dry and wipe out most of the water. So let's go ahead and the, way, the color that we used in the beginning was cobalt blue and phthalo blue. You're going to take your paintbrush and dip it in the phthalo blue and then put some off to the side right here, okay? And dip it in some white and mix that. You can even use a little of that yellow color that you use to do your fireflies with. And now we're gonna take some water and we wanna make this really watery, but not so watery that it drips down off of your canvas. So this is what we're going to fill in our jar with. More water, I, wanna, I want it watery, but not drippy watery. Okay, we've got a good consistency now, so we're going to start outlining the mason jar drawing that we put on here. Just go all the way around and try to do this as quickly as possible, okay? Remember your paint is supposed to be watered down. Doesn't have to be super perfect. Remember this is a painting. We're not trying to go for a uh, photograph look. Okay, now that I've got it down here and you're probably thinking, wait a minute, how come you're covering up my cute little, um, my cute little fireflies? Let me straighten this out a little. I'm gonna make my jar a little bit rounder. Okay, so I'm gonna take that little square paper towel and I'm gonna start rubbing and rubbing and rubbing till I get all of this filled in, but with a very, very, very soft shade of this blue. Keeping the outside stronger. Now you can see why your fireflies have to be um, nice and dry. Blend, 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 blend. I think that's good enough. I'm just trying to give it that glassy look. All right, so with the same paintbrush and the same amount of paint, I'm gonna just go ahead and give it the round part here at the bottom. Take my finger and sort of blend that in. That's the, the actual bottom part of the jar. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the lines that go across. Oops, I got out of the lines here. If you ever get out of the lines, just use your little wet paper towel 
clean it up. See how you can still see the fireflies coming out? Okay. Now with the same amount of paint that's on here, I don't want to rinse that out, I'm going to dip it into some white, just plain white. And go ahead and put some highlights on my jar. Okay, and then maybe along the edge here, just a few places, especially where this little um, firefly is hitting it with light here. I want to make sure that I get that reflection onto the glass. And maybe in a few more little areas, just where the light is hitting it. And see, there's a bug here, so we want to get the highlights for that. Let's see, and then there'll be highlights down here where the bugs are illuminating inside the jar. Now, usually jars have like a shine mark on the outside of the jar. So I'm going to go ahead and use that same color just to hit it in a few places just to give it more of that glassy look. Now don't worry about the bottom because I have to still put grass coming over the bottom. Otherwise, right now, it just looks like this jar is sort of floating and I really don't want that look. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the um, bottom part of our grass. So remember when we made our grass green out of the hooker's green and the orange? We're gonna do the same thing again, but let's first start with hooker's green and then add a little bit of the orange to it. We're gonna do this in a couple of tones because this is the grass that's in the forefront. So we really want it to look like it's the closest thing to us. And so we're gonna go ahead and take our paintbrush and paint just blades of grass coming over our jar. And this makes it look like it's nestled in the grass. We want several shades, so go ahead and use um, straight hookers green, some with the, a little bit of orange, and some with a lot of orange in it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mix a lighter shade. And And what's really nice is you can actually see the grass that's behind the jar from this uh, technique that we used to do the jar color. And now we're seeing grass that's in the front. So we're getting a lot of depth here. So how are you doing, David? I'm having real fun. You're having a lot of fun? Good, good. I'm happy to come over there and help you if you want some help. You're good? Okay. All right, so at this point, I think I'm going to stop. I think I have enough grass in the front. And there's only one small little detail that we need to do. It's very important. But just like we did the reflection of the lighter parts on our jar, we want to See how the reflection from that bug is lighting that? We want to have those little bit of reflections on there. 
Now we want to do it to the grass that's closest to one of our bugs. So you're going to take your paint that is that same color that you use for your fireflies, which was cad yellow light and white. And mix those two together. And then come over here where your grass, your lightest grass color was, which was the orange and the hooker's green, and mix it in that. And now that's gonna be my highlight color for a few of these blades of grass that are right next to one of my fireflies because they illuminate everything that's around them. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit just a few of them. And that's just kind of like the final finishing touch on our painting. We make sure we don't forget those little details that really make it look finished. Alright, so now I have all of the highlights on the grass that are around my fireflies. That's very, very important that um, I scope the entire painting and look at the ones that are really close to a blade of grass. That kind of gives it that, you know, reflection off on, on the grass. So now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a really cute little rope bow around there made out of jute. And so, take a little of the hooker's green and mix it in with orange. A lot of orange actually because we're trying to make a brown color and then a little bit of white. Okay. I think I need a little bit more orange. So I want it to be definitely more on the tan side. Okay. Alrighty. So all I'm going to do is sort of just free hand this. So I'm going to just come around here and come around here to each side. Whoops. And just do a, a bow and Okay, maybe take a little bit of a, a lighter shade of that by adding some white and just hitting it in a few places just to give it some highlights. And that is it. The only thing left to do is sign your painting when you get done. So I think I'm just going to sign mine along the bottom here. And when you're signing your name, you want to use a very fine paintbrush. Make sure you work with paint that's not thick. So take your paintbrush, dip it into some water, and mix it into the color that you've chosen, and it'll just glide a lot easier. So I always sign my name in the right-hand corner, but you can sign your name anywhere you want to. And so we'll just go ahead and start with one letter at a time. So David, you can go ahead and get started too if you'd like. If you want to add more to this painting, I've got a couple of ideas for you. 
you could always take about the size of a silver dollar and put a moon up here. And you can even do it in the same effect by filling it in all white and then smoothing out the edges just to give it that glow. Or you maybe you want to put some little tents way in the background. But for now, we're going to call this painting done. So we're all done and we have three beautiful paintings. Uh, David, was this your first time painting? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you did amazing. How about you, Cynthia? It was my first time painting. Oh. But this was a lot of fun. Oh, I think you guys, they're beautiful. I think they're a lot of fun and they'll look great hanging up in your room, right, David? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So if you'd like to learn more about my videos, go to letspaintwithvictoriagobel.com and make sure you subscribe to all of my videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for coming and wave goodbye, everybody. Bye.